when he he mentioned um, babes in Christ, you know, it just it, it hit me. For the most part, we're talking about naturally adult people, right? Mm-hmm. They're nat- they're naturally adult. They're mm-hmm. adults, right? When they come to the church, they bring their families, but we're talking the parents are the ones who come in join the church, right? They come in through the door for the most part. So what God said to me is they're spiritually babies. Mm -hmm. So when you think about babies, babies come into this world, right? They they look to their parents for nourishment. They're dependent upon their parents for for nourishment, for attention, for love, right? And these are the people who are walking in. They've been beaten up by the world. They've been beaten up by mm. life, right? Mm. They're coming in, they're spiritual mm. babies. They, they, they are crying and their souls are crying mm. out for God. Wow. And what they're needing is someone to spoon feed them spiritually, the word, mm. to love on them spiritually, right? Mm. To, to guide them, to, to help them grow. And we, and when we talk about spiritual growth, like I, you know, y'all ain't growing. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, who fault is that? <laughs> no, this the one. This the one. Sheep begat sheep. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> sheep begat sheep, and I was sit there like I don't want to bring bring nobody else in here to bleed just like me. Right. You know what I thought about Tara when you were when you were. Um, talking about a baby, a spiritual baby, or just a physical baby that they're so dependent on their parents for wow. nourishment. And a thought just came, you know, babies don't even know when they're being abused. Yes. If you sit there, if you have a newborn baby and you smack and hit that, that baby has no kind of perception or anything that they're being abused, they're being mistreated. Why? Because they're a baby. They're yeah. not even fully developed, but as time go on, you know, they get older, they yeah. become, they know, um, mm-hmm. even as a child, that it doesn't make them feel good. Right. Even if they're two or three or four years old, now they come into um, somewhat of a, a little understanding that they don't like how it feels. Right. So they are try to do things to try to make the person happy. So this person won't be unhappy with them and maybe whatever they may do, maybe beating them or just calling them names, cussing them out, hitting them or whatever. So they try their hardest to do things to please the person because they don't. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 You want it. Yes, sir. absolutely. No, we no. have all experienced some some heartbreaking yeah. things as well as so many others that are going to watch this. But yeah. the Church of God is not like this. This is no. healing. I mean, no, it, it, yeah. it, is. Yeah. it is. It is. It is. And, and what we have to keep in mind, and, and Brother John, I'm glad you you mentioned it because the true church is beautiful. The true the true church is nurturing. Yeah. It's loving and it's caring. It's yeah. it's empathetic it's compassionate to one another Mm -hmm. you know when we are talking about you know what we call church we're speaking to religion and 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 man's manipulation and and man's traditions and man's way of doing things and that doesn't always line up with god's way of doing things You know, and I and I think for for leadership, we have to keep this in mind. Um, you know, when I ran across this scripture years ago, it was you know uh, First Peter uh, chapter five, and it's like the first three verses, and it and it's speaking to the leaders. It's speaking to the leaders, and. Peter saying, hey, you know, to the elders who, you know, I myself am an elder, you know, don't do this out of out of greed, don't do this being forced, you know, don't do this, you know, trying to manipulate God's heritage, but understand that these are God's people, 
And then he goes on to say that more than anything, our roles as leaders, our, our roles as elders is to be examples before the flock. So, so more than the words that we're speaking across the pulpit and all of those things, it's our actions. Are we showing Christ in the way we treat people? Are we right. showing Christ in the way we interact with one another? Are we showing Christ in the way we treat our spouses? Are we showing Christ in the way we treat our children? Are we showing Christ in the way we're talking to one another in, in all settings, you know? So more than, you know, you taking this position of authority uh, uh, of this is what it is. No, it's us being examples before God's people because we have to understand this is God. These are God's sheep. You know, these are God's children. These are souls that God is entrusting us with. So, you know, we are to be examples. You know what I mean? And that's what, I mean, we saw that picture of the greatest example of that in Jesus Christ. He was a servant leader. He was a leader who served. And even the word minister means servant, slave, you know. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep that in mind. You know, so many times, you know, people want to get the title just for a position, just so mm -hmm. people can look at them in, in this prestigious spot and, and as an authoritative figure. But no, no, no. Taking on that that title of minister is mean you you get low, you serve, you do the you do the worst of the worst that that people don't the jobs people don't want to do. That's what you do through your sacrifice, through your love, through your service, through your giving of yourself. You know, being poured out. You know, for God's use. So, you know, more yeah. than anything, us leaders need to understand it's about being examples before God's people. Yeah. You know, one thing I, I think about um, a few years ago, I, I went to class where I was in a business school and in my marketing class, we learned that, you know, no matter what your job is, no matter who you are, you're a salesman. Because I would always think that, you know, looking for jobs or, you know, whatever else, I hated the area of sales, but no matter what you do, no matter what your job, some type of way, you're doing promotions for someone else you're doing. Mm -hmm. So even as believers, we're a walking billboard for mm -hmm. the kingdom life, Jesus. representing Christ, representing a lifestyle that we're supposed to be winning people over to that they look at us and say, okay, I can't see Jesus physically, but I know you're connected to him. Mm -hmm. So if you say you live in that kingdom and you believe in this and that, and this is how I'm seeing him, I'm not buying that, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So we have to be, you know, representatives. We have to be, pro you know, promotion. We have to sell the kingdom by the way that we act. And it's not that Paul said, all of you supposed to do the work of evangelism. It ain't wow. just you know, everybody do. It's yeah. not just one person. It's not a certain title. It's not this and that. No, you, I mean, it's just, you all there to win souls by your life. And it's not just in a building. It's not just one day a week. It's when I go to my business, when I go on a, a sales call or whatever I'm doing, whatever you choose to do, whether it's serving in a hospital, I, I can remember um, I was doing a notary appointment for someone and they, they came out and they were asking me questions, this and that. I say, well, this is my pulpit right here. Mm. I say, when I'm teaching the kids or when I'm, you know, serving a client or this or that, I'm, I'm preaching right here through, you know, through my lifestyle. I don't have to belong to a certain ministry. I have a certain, yes, I am, you know, ordained as a minister, but I don't carry that title to try to, you know, fit in or right. impress anyone, but God is more concerned about how I carry myself and, you know, represent him. Right. Right. Oh, that's, that's good, bro. Man, uh, 
we can go on and on because <laughs> this is such a rich conversation. We may have to have a part two. Yeah. I think we, I think we will um, have to have a part two. But in closing, in closing, um, I do want to pose this one last question mm -hmm. for that person that has experienced "quote unquote" church hurt, and and I'm not not trying to make light of that for that yeah. person that that has been abused. Mm -hmm. from a leader in the American church. Um, and that person is ready to turn away from, mm -hmm. not only just from that particular religious organization, but they're ready to turn away from God. What's something that, that you would say to that person that has experienced that hurt, has experienced that abuse, and has now connected that to God as the abuser, you know, what do you say to that person? Both of you. To, and and, and the John, and then you, Charlene, and then Sister Tara, if you wouldn't mind sharing. Well, my, my first thought, as you were saying that and posing this question, I, I went back to uh, um, <laughs> I, I've had so many jobs, but I'm just <laughs> Jamaican, you know, just six jobs. I got six jobs, man. Oh, you know, I, I used to, I used to drive Uber and Lyft, and I remember one night I picked up this couple. They were newly married, and this, you know, I was sharing. You know, my wife and I've been been married for twenty years at the time, and they were like, you know, what what kind of what kind of word, you know, what what would you give us as advice or something that we could hold on to? And I just I thought about the word seasons. It's like, no matter what we go through, if you can hold on to the next season and then, because just think about it, you can you can look back on so many times in your life where you thought it was, just, it was almost over. Mm. You just couldn't hold on no more. You was at the last string. You was like, you was ready to give it all up. But you look back now and you pass through it. It, you know, it's over or, you know, the effects have, dwindle some from from that time and all i can say you know I, i've been through a lot of still some things that i'm healing from but god is doing those things but it's, it comes with time it comes in seasons there's going to be times where those things i remember a, a book uh, years ago that um td jakes wrote called naked and not ashamed mm -hmm. and he talked about how mm -hmm. jesus died on the cross and we're used to seeing him with the loincloth on, right. but that was a lie. They didn't put anything on the, yeah. the right. prisoners that they killed. So he was there bare. And I got to a point in my life where I, I, I'm not ashamed to share any part of my story, all the jacked up stuff that I did, all the stuff that people did to me, both sides of the coin, I'm willing to be naked and share because my hurt is gonna help somebody else heal. So if I can hold on and make it through this, get to another season, then somebody else is going to be able to benefit from it and grow and be able to hold on to God as they learn their identity and shake all of this other mess off and find him through, you know, all this other stuff. Mm, that's good. Thank you. Yeah. No, I would say that one of the things, I guess I would have to, from the way that I look at it, I I've always just looked at it that I know I have to stand before him for myself to, I will try to encourage them to, you, you can't look, or for, and even though a part of us, that's not to excuse people and make excuses for their behavior, but I know I've seen it a lot just growing up in church, even still being in Jersey, where you know, you focus too much on the individual mm -hmm. and okay, they may do this and that. And I'm, I may say it, it's not right or this and that, but you have to establish that relationship with God for yourself. That's like your natural parents. You can't have a relationship with your mom through some, through your sister or through mm -hmm. your brother. Right. You have to have that relationship yourself and get to know God and his word for yourself because if we focus on people, 
we ain't gonna make it. I mean, when you look at it, because to say they're human is not an excuse, but some of them do things that you gotta realize that people are looking and watching and following you, that you gotta establish that relationship with God. Because I had to say to myself, because I used to wonder why people would say, I'll be ready to be, you know, people this, that, and the other. I don't want nothing to do with God. But if I didn't have a relationship with God, I can clearly understand why people leave. Absolutely. I really see it now. I said, I see clearly now why people don't want anything to do with, I guess, when you say church, like going to church and just being around the people. Mm -hmm. And just even um, the other day, one of the directors said, you know, man, I don't see so many people in church do so much stuff. He just sat there and shook his head. And I was at the desk and I looked up at him and he was like, I don't see people do so much stuff in church. And, and I said to myself, I said, Lord, see, is that right there? Mm. why people can't you know can't get and it's sad because we're going to answer for that right. Like, right so i would try to encourage people to you know listen don't give up on god mm. he's not like man Amen. if you get to have that relationship with him just pray, read his word every day, establish that relationship with God for yourself. I guarantee you will see that he is not the way people present him to be. And you be the example. What's, what's the quote that said? You be the um, change you wish to see in this world. Right. I guess I'm right, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, it. It. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. Wow. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, so I return. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote down, you know. God is not man, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of times we we do get it twisted because mm -hmm. of some of the things that we hear come across the pulpit, right? Mm -hmm. Some of the, the teachings, you got to go through me to get to God. Mm -hmm. No, Jesus tore the veil. I don't have to right. go through nobody. <laughs> uh -huh. Jesus is the way. That, that, <laughs> there we go. We have that. Um but what I, I, I tend to, to say is men are subject to error. Mm. We're human beings. We're subject to error. God did not make a perfect human being. Mm. The only one that was perfect that walked this earth was Jesus Christ, mm. right? We are going through a purification process throughout our lives until we see him and he makes us perfect, <laughs> right? Um, so... I, I typically tell them the same thing, you, you know, to build the relationship. I mean, I've had questions like, um, well, why did God lead me to this place anyway if he was just going to allow the people to hurt me? Well, you might not like the answer, <laughs> you know, but God wanted you to see what was of him and what was not of him. Amen. God needed you to understand that he is different than man. Mm -hmm. His ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. And what you went through here is something that you can carry on and understand that this is not God. Right. Right. He, right. Here is what led me here. Yes, God led you mm -hmm. here. And here is the reason why. And a lot of times he'll tell you the reason why he led you there. He, he's leading you really to him, but he's using this person at that moment. It doesn't mean necessarily that you got to stay there. And a lot of times we, we tend to stay too long. <laughs> we stay a lot longer than we should. Mm -hmm. we, we, I mean, we really do. You see it, you know, there is a saying that they, they say in the world, when someone show you who they are, you better believe them. <laughs> but you always have that feeling that you want to be there when it turns around. You know, I, I want to see God do something. I, I want to be here to say I was a part of this and I went, we went through this, but he brought us out and you always want to be there to see that other side of it. But yeah, yeah. It, it, he, he done told you to leave a long time ago. <laughs> you still try, you want to see the outcome. It ain't for you to see that outcome. Boy, you know, it would have gonna fall on you. You gonna be still looking around. Right, 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 right. No. Keep in mind, one plants, another waters, but it's God that gives the increase. So, yeah. you know, yeah. we may not see it, but wow. 
Hey, well, thank y'all because yeah. um, that's that's um, that's really good, I mean, and that's what we really have to keep in mind when it comes to you know this topic that we're discussing: the abuse mm -hmm. of authority in the church, uh, because it's so many people who are being impacted negatively behind bad authority, right. you know, and, it, and it's kind of challenging, you know, for us, like, as African Americans, you know, when, when we hear portions of the Bible that mention slavery and slaves and things like that, you know, it, we, we kind of, you know, it's, it's a trigger, it's a mm -hmm. trigger sometimes, but this is the thing, <laughs> when you have the perfect master, when you have the perfect master, that means he is all about your well-being. He wants the best for you. He has a purpose for your life. He cares for you. He loves you. He, he wants to provide you. He wants to take on all of the pain that you're going to face in life. You know, he wants to provide a, an environment for success for you. It's hard for us to grasp that because... We have the pictures of slavery, you know, here in America. We have the, the literal pictures of backs split open, bodies hanging from quote unquote masters, you know. So it's us really getting the picture of what a true master is, what a true father is, what true love is, you know, so... Man, oh, we could uh, again. We can go on and on. I, you know, we're gonna have to cut it. But oh, this has been so good. Yeah, yeah this is gonna be well, so good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you both. Thank y'all. Oh my goodness. Charlene, oh. thank you. Oh. Uh, you know. I'm telling you seriously. Thank you. Oh, it is. It was healing for both of us, mm. but it took me to that place too. You know, as we wiped that little tears. You know, mm. but I will say. It, we will never be tricked again like that. Mm, amen. Mm. Amen. That's right. You know, I want to say this, um, and it's going to be short because it, it brings to my attention because I've been kind of wondering, but now I kind of see just by me being down here and the Lord is like bringing it to my remembrance. Even it's it's not even about the age, but even on, you know, where I work at, I would say, just, I just say, it's just the authority, period. You know, when it's not, when a person doesn't, doesn't understand the authority mm -hmm. and how to delegate it or what to say or do, and it's like, there's a tendency, I'm, it don't seem like it's real, like, blatant, blatant, but it is that abuse of authority. And I and I that's I'm gonna say pray for because it's like I find myself I was really acting out against it mm. to where it was like the attitude was like you you don't tell me what to do I mean you, you need to just like back up some I mean it was like I was getting real defensive with a lot of stuff to where not long ago maybe like a month or so ago. It's like I just kind of snapped for the moment. And it was like, whoa. And I, I said, I walked away. I apologized because it was like, you know, just kind of. And it's like out of the blue, it just came out of me. And I just slammed the thing. I was like, I'm not doing it again. And, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> and the person was like looking at me like, whoa, who's not? And, um, but I know, anyway, I ain't getting all into that, but. I can kind of see now where, because I started questioning myself, like, Charlene, what is going on with you? Why are you so touchy when it comes to this and that? When I got, you know, I would be okay. But then it was just certain things. It would like, just kind of hit me in the gut. It's like, wait a minute, huh? I would always have something to say back. Like, even if it's, you know, it wasn't always, yeah, it was Charlene. <laughs> 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 and I was like, no, no, you ain't pleased with that. I can't mm. be, you know, even sometime with all of that, they still think I'm the nicest person and this and that. I'm like, Lord, I'm about flipped out in this place. And they took, 
Well, you know, you got a way that you just this and that, and you just don't change, stay the same way. Mm. <laughs> and then even like today i said something i was like well people if i say this and that they gonna think i'm being mean and this and that no they would i can't see them they can't ever say that about you i was i want to see you the one i went off on but, <laughs> <laughs> but i'll just i can see the connection now so i thank god for this and it's like i didn't know that was going to hit me like that, but I, I need the healing in that mm. and stop. I know for me, just, I don't know. It's just this thing of just, I need to deal with, I don't have to be perfect. There you go. You know what I mean? There you go. There you go. Oh, wow. And it's like, if you see something is wrong, like, oh, I ain't supposed to be, you know, thinking like that. I ain't supposed to say it like that. I ain't supposed to. But it's like I can kind of see with some things and God still showed me like he still loves me. And I'm like, I'll say or do something. And it's like something will happen for me that's good. And I'm like, mm. you kind of feel like you didn't deserve it because I shouldn't have said it like that, Lord. I'm sorry, <laughs> boy. I, you know, I shouldn't have thought that or did that the other. And it's like, people, girl, you fine. And I'm like, really so it helps me you know even this is going to help me mm. to heal and to realize that god loves me he does unconditional that's simple yeah. but people say you gotta be you know you don't always believe that the way you should right and he really unconditional is unconditional indeed you don't have a revelation about that because you just assume because of people and their reaction towards you that he's the same way but it's learning to separate that, that I can, it's nothing I can say or do that's going to make him stop loving me. There you go. Right. And it's like to get that down in my spirit and in my soul to heal my soul, you know, mm. I'm on my way. So I thank God for y'all. <laughs> Praise uh, God. <laughs> to God be the glory. I'm going to the Red Sea so we can get our deliverance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, stop. Oh man. Wow. Well, praise God. Praise God. I am I am oh. just mm. I'm so happy. You know, like my my spirit, my mm. soul is happy. I needed this. Um yeah, we, we definitely needed to have this conversation. Yeah. And we needed to have this conversation with you. Oh, praise yeah. God. For us to connect. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So well. Thank you all for joining us here yes. for another episode of Chats of the Heart. If anything resonated with you, please comment. If you need prayer, if you uh, subjects or any topics that you would like us to discuss, just hit us up and let us know. And we just thank you for your time. Yes. Thank, thank you, you too for your time. Absolutely. As well. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Guys.